afternoon. This is a meeting of the Scarborough School Board. It's January 8th, 2018. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealing? Here. Mrs. Durgan? Ms. Kiosalona? Here. Mrs. Lightroom? Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Hitman? Here. Mr. Vashon? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Fair enough. Are there any public comments on the agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to 6.0, the superintendent's report. Yes, so I just wanted to um, remind us of a couple of things that are coming up. Today we disseminated the community services survey, so they're asking for families to um, submit their thinking around whether or not they'll need before care or after care during the next school year when our new start time schedule changes. So we um, have posted it on all of our media sources. Um, they are posting it on the town website and their sources. And we also um, disseminated it by email to families today. So we encourage folks to um, complete the survey. It's really going to help community services determine you know, what staffing will look like and anticipate sort of what the need will be um, here in Scarborough with the new schedule. We also have our Listen to Learn budget sessions that are coming up. The first one is going to be this Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, at the Wentworth Learning Commons. And we're working with some of our student leaders to try to uh, secure some child care. So if families find that to be a barrier, um, you can still come. And uh, some of our stellar high school students will provide child care. Um, for the parents during the meeting so they can be attending. And then we have another one coming up um, during the day from 1 to 2 on Tuesday, January 16th, right here in the council chambers. On Monday, January 22nd, we'll be at the Dunstan Fire Station from 6 to 7 p.m. And then on Tuesday, January 23rd, we'll be at the Scarborough Public Library from 6 to 7. And really, um, the town manager and myself are just trying to listen to the community and find out what's working well for them, um, what would they like to see us improving and changing um, as we begin this next budget cycle for the F-119 fiscal year. Our monthly enrollment report is also available and updated on our website as it is every month. Right now, um, our enrollment has increased from last month to January by four students. Uh, we have a couple, new, a couple more students at the high school and middle school, a few less at Wentworth, um, and then our K-2 enrollment state remains pretty stable. And now I'm really excited tonight because we have a couple students here who are going to share with us a presentation that they have um, designed in collaboration with uh, Ryan Tardick from Maine Boys to Men, and they're going to talk about the work that they have been engaged in as we um, work to reduce sex and violence at both the Scarborough High School and the Middle School. So with that, I would introduce Sarah Stauffer and Julia Dougherty, along with Ryan Tardif from the University of Maine. Thank you all for having us today. Um, Thank you, Julia and Sarah, for, for doing this and taking time out of your busy lives. Um, so I'm just going to do some overview around some of our programming. Um, I think for some of you, this will be some of the information will be uh, stuff that you heard last year or may already be aware. Some of it will be new. Um, and for a good chunk of the presentation, I'm going to have um, Sarah and Julia be speaking about their experiences because I think that's what's really valuable um, for us, for, for adults to hear and community members to hear. So it's just our mission statement. I'm not going to spend the time reading through all of it. It's just there, but um, our primary goal is, is to reduce um, interpersonal violence in communities. And our kind of a big aim is to support boys and men in healthy emotional development. And we do that by running trains that 
uh, develop student leaders like the ones with us here today um, who can drive that work from the from from the youth and be able to have it be meaningful to the people who are really going to be the next leaders of our communities. Brian, I think that um, for it to be recorded well, you'll have to be okay, closer to sorry. the microphone. Um, so our current programming, just for you to see this quickly, we're working with high school students, middle school students, um, and we also do some work with um, at-risk and in-risk youth, um, as well as many adult, many types of adult programming. Um, right now, our primary focus areas are high school, middle school, and our RSV intensive program, um, and everything at the high school encapsulates, which is a lot of our kind of youth engagement and leadership opportunities. Uh, so again, kind of our, our, our three areas kind of carved up. So we've got middle school, uh, which we're doing here in Scarborough, um, at the high school, which we're also doing here in Scarborough, some adult work, um, which we aren't doing as much of here, but it is present, and, um, and then our programming. So over the last um, several years, we've had um, kind of both the high school and middle school program be reinforced by third-party evidence. Um, our middle school program was just this year um, measured in a pilot study by UNH and some work that's been ongoing and will be continuing. Um, it has shown that our middle school program, which um, Scarborough Middle School has in invited us this year to do our second year programming with, um, is working in showing an increase in emotional awareness. Um, it's showing an increase in the acceptance of and endorsement of more gen gender equality in the home, so looking at like roles that um, a heterosexual couple will have in the family, so more um, positive views of that. Um, and also looking at more critical thinking and views about um, male power and privilege in our culture. And then the uh, third party evidence around the high school program has been ongoing for several years, um, and that's been effective in actually changing attitudes and beliefs um, looking at issues of gender-based violence and sexism, but it's also showing to be really effective in developing student leaders who can take on the roles of um, actually creating change in the community at a level that we don't believe that um, can be done without youth engagement taking the lead there. Yeah, just, just to give a quick kind of update on what the programming is, is looking like right now, um, for high school, we try to have a diverse um, group of participants in the high school join it. Uh, it's about 30 to 40 students. Um, typically, two members of the faculty will join that, and the faculty who take part in that training will hopefully become advisors for the RSVP action groups that um, kind of form after our initial trainings and then do ongoing leadership work, which is what these will be speaking about. Um, and that will kind of be, continue to grow and expand as we have additional trainings and other students kind of take on the role. Um, it's a 12-hour training over two days, six hours each day, um, and then the outcome is again that student, that RSVP group. Um, middle school, slightly different. Um, for middle school this year, we just finished up our first half of programming with the eighth grade students. Um, we coordinated with um, Diane or De Denise over there and Diane and David to deliver the program through the health class to, so that it would be the least disruptive to the um, daily school schedule. And so we just worked with the first semester students. We finished that a few weeks ago. Um, and with that, we are reaching not only the, the male identified students um, through the health classes, but we're reaching about one to two faculty members per session. Um, and so being able to Kind of increase the awareness among the uh, faculty at the middle school, which is also a positive. Um, this year we also um, partnered with Hardy Girls Healthier Women to work with the female identified uh, individuals at Scarborough Middle School so that everyone in the eighth grade would receive um, programming similar to um, kind of gender based violence prevention, but looking at also like how can we take action in the community and that end gain the social and emotional skills to be able to um, take on the leadership. And so that's why we're going to encourage us to partner with us in those 
Um, and the outcomes for, for those programs are different. A lot of it is looking at kind of early level positive social and emotional development, building some awareness, um, kind of engaging students in a process that will allow them to develop some leadership skills, and it serves as a primer for the high school training. So that when students enter the high school, particularly um, male, male identified individuals, they will be more likely to engage with and participate in the high school programming and um, take on those leadership roles as well. So, um, and that is something that we've been working on for a few years and we're just this year starting to see our first classes of boys being able to come through and have had that work, um, have been a part of the work. So, so topics addressed in the, in, in the programs for both the high school and the middle school, um, we explore kind of gender stereotypes and pressures as well as the issues that um, they may cause and have been proven to cause in, in communities when they are held in rigid ways. Um, looking at building and developing healthy masculinity, strengthening um, our social and emotional skills and how we communicate them and experience them. Um, looking at developing <coughs> communication, particularly in the context of technology and how relationships form and sustain um, in the context of, of social media, texting, all of those new mediums that are um, add a lot of different barriers to how we relate to each other as individuals. Um, and then with that, we, we look at you know, how do we build healthy relationship skills, how do we prevent gender-based violence through both early education and um, kind of elite-led initiatives within the community, um, ultimately leading to um, skills and bystander intervention and that leadership and the actual actions that um, will serve to prevent gender-based violence in the future, prevent acts of sexism and sexual violence. Just to give you a couple um, peeks at kind of some of the main pieces of our program, so we do this, this man box activity, which looks at gender roles. We also do um, the box in the high school that I don't have, I don't have pictures of, so I couldn't put it in there, but a gender box it covers both uh, a man box and an athletic lady box, so it's like the rigid gender roles for both male and female. Um, so that's kind of where we start things. That's kind of like an awareness exercise and a reflection exercise. Then we go through a lot of different pieces around uh, communication, healthy relationships, and all that. And we wrap up with um, a bystander intervention. So looking at how do we speak up and support when we see people being mistreated, um, looking at developing a community that jumps in to intervene when they see something not, um, think not waits for someone else to act. So trying to change that uh, area of <coughs> helping and supporting people a little bit. And so now I kind of want to stop talking and let, <laughs> let these guys speak about their experiences. These are like different quotes from things that we've taken from students over the years. We have the slide for it, so I figured I'd put it up there, but um, I'll let the students speak for themselves. So thank you. Thank you. I guess I'm just looking at this to you guys. <laughs> so, um, my name is Sarah Stopper. Hi, I'm Julia Dorney. Um, and we're students who have been involved with Maine Boys to Men and their RSVP program here at Scarborough High School. Um, we were you could just come a little closer to the Oh, I guess. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> bring it right we're, down. Bring it right down. Yeah, thank you. Oh. So we were first pulled into this program um, in January of last year, our sophomore year of high school, when we were nominated by different teachers and staff at the school um, who had seen us um, step into leadership positions in the past or had known of community service work that we had done um, previous to this, and they thought that it would be good fits to join the first training here at Scarborough High School. Um, we were joined with about 40 other students who went through the same nomination process. And we did a two-day, two 12-hour training um, with main boys to men. Um, so, the boys to men taught me a lot about gender roles, um, healthy masculinity, and as well as healthy femininity. Um, they taught me acceptance of myself and others. Um, how to be an effective bystander, and as I'm going to college next year, I really, it's kind of opened my mind on like how the world works and how I need to respect myself and others as I move on later in life. 
Um, uh, <laughs> um, I, I appreciate and I respect the way that they go about these trainings and they really direct it at the students and um, try not to point fingers because these can be really, um, we can talk about really like, hard, like, hard and tough subjects and um, there are a lot of like supports that we make sure that we have in the groups and we have student leaders who run who are also have gone through the trainings and are able to handle um, like help talk students down and I that's hands down one of the best things about boys to men that they have resources that you can use if you're feeling overwhelmed or struggling. Mm -hmm. They definitely do a good job of going through the training and it's not just um, you know, a couple of adults standing in front of students and sort of like talking at them. They um, run the trainings through group activities and group discussions, um, which um, helps elicit different ideas from the group and helps them chat about it and sort of come to some sort of understanding with each other, um, which helps throughout the next two days um, when they go through the training. So since the trainings, um, Julie and I have both been involved with student-led trainings on SAT Day of last year, um, which sadly juniors couldn't be a part of. Um, we also facilitated the November training this year um, here at Town Hall, and we had done a couple of other um, community-based um, programs as well. Um, in the future, we're hoping to do some other things with the student, like other trainings and community-led um, presentations. Um, and we're also hoping to um, bring in some more administration and staff at the school and talk to coaches and um, the staff to hopefully get them on board. Um, so I strongly encourage you to think about submitting names of students that you know or have done community service work in the past or exhibit potential to really take this um, group RSVP to the next level and can lead others in how to respect the world and how to stand up for yourself. Um, <laughs> um, many students like myself, um, like Sarah, we We've all had kind of conversations in little chat groups, and um, the main thing that we've taken away is how to stand up for other people. And um, high school is challenging, and it's scary, and um, I know now that after going through this training that I have other students who feel the same way, and that they're also struggling, um, and so it makes me feel safer in my community and my school. <coughs> These um, groups of students are typically randomly selected um, just from nominations coming in from teachers and staff. So it's definitely a good mix of students, um, which helps us sort of relate to people that we wouldn't necessarily talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, however, there can be some challenges. I've had some friends who have sort of pushed against this work, um, which, is which is expected with any sort of change coming to the school district. So we're just hoping that, you know, people will get on board and um, this will be hopefully positive change for the school district and we're hoping to keep moving forward with it. So I would just add a couple of things to what the students and Ryan are saying. Um, we started this work over a year ago and last year we did train 40 students, um, 20 that identify male and 20 that identify female and all of our 8th grade boys. And this year, our goal is to train 120 students. And so Dylan participated in one of the initial trainings this year. And we have another one coming up at the end of January, I believe. Okay, that's You're talking about it? Oh, okay. Um, and I guess for the community, what I would want you to, I would want you to see how this connects to our overall long-range strategic um, vision for improvement. So as you know, we have four overarching strategic themes. One is around um, effective teaching and learning. Two is safe and inclusive schools. Three is global citizenship and four is community engagement. And we really see this work as, you know, hitting all of those areas in, in so many different aspects. And it's been really empowering for us as a leadership team to see our students emerging as leaders and actually teaching us. So some of the students facilitated a training um, for the Leadership Council, which is all of the building leadership leaders a few weeks ago. And it's been um, really powerful.
powerful and impacting our work in a way that we're just thinking about how we manage some of these things as adults as well. Are uh, there any questions? Yes, Jackie. How do you deal with a student or a group of students who say they're horsing around, but it's, you're outside the group, you're looking at what they're doing, and it appears to you that one of the people in the group, doesn't matter if it's male or female, seem to be the center of the joking around, if you will. How do you deal with that as an outsider looking in? What? Um, I'm kind of a shy person, <laughs> very shy. Um, and there, I've definitely seen it happen with some of my other friends where they'll just be like, that's not okay. And it's kind of just saying, like, that hurts my, like, that hurts my feelings. <clears throat> or like, even when you walk by and you hear something and just say, that's not okay. And that's mostly what I do, because I hear a lot of it down the halls. Um, but it's, def it's definitely hard to walk into a conversation and feel like, that's not okay. Um, please don't say that. Um, especially if they're older than you, or, I don't know. But it's definitely, you have to speak up, otherwise it won't change. Yeah, how's that being received by the people to whom you're speaking? Um, at first, we've had, when it's happened, um, I noticed a lot of, like, oh, well, who are you? But, um, like, if people, under, like, when they understand that I'm feeling upset about what they said, or that it's not okay, they usually are like, okay, it's fine. Um, and they might say it again later, but it, I know that I got to them. Has it improved? I, I've seen more of an improvement and when I walk down um, and when I'm in classes and my teachers have definitely after we talked to them a couple of times like the teacher the staff um, they definitely have picked up upon like standing up for other students and kind of stopping the negative talk um, I've seen a big change in the classroom not as much the hallway but um, definitely been improved. thank you and also depends on who I mean, how comfortable you are with a person who's like coursing around in the hallway, and so that um, also, you know, a little bit more like indirect ways of going about um, letting them know that that's not okay. And I think as long as you're being respectful about it, um, but also um, adamant that that's not okay, um, they tend to be respectful about it. Okay. Right. Did you want to? Yeah. No. Thank you so much. <coughs> Thank you both. Um, yeah, to like follow up on that, part of part of our so like bystander intervention training is addressing um, all the different ways that one might intervene, and all those are kind of based on um, how comfortable someone might be, which can relate a lot to like kind of their experiences, social status in the school, what type of personality they have, and so we have a whole range of, of options. Um, as Sarah was alluding to, that we have like everything from like the most direct form of confrontation to let someone know that something's not okay to being the one who maybe says something or checks in with someone afterwards uh, if you're not the type of person who is going to jump in at that moment because not everyone is able to, to do that. And so, thank you. Um, so, just some things to um, show what, what students are doing. Some of, some of this stuff is stuff that you've heard about, but um, some of it involves um, some like creative use of, of building awareness and presenting these ideas. So, so like like showing, discussing short films to do that. Um, to, like actually writing and presenting spoken word poetry, doing pieces um, at conferences and social awareness campaigns that can be used to build awareness. Um, and then the other pieces are like they're like students are meeting weekly to have these discussions and, and plan things going forward and meeting monthly at. Um, rallies that we have that um, connect schools across different communities everywhere from um, Topsum down here to Scarborough and trying to get um, just students from different communities to share their ideas and, and talk about how um, things are working, what's not working, what they might be able to collaborate on. And, um, those are really cool opportunities to, to be a part of. Um, and then just being, being role models, being mentors and role models to other 
other students, um, students who are going to middle school or going into high school, or um, the students in their school that look up to them. So there's a lot of different ways that students can be engaged and are engaged already. Um, so from here, from like people who are seeing this and who are present here today, I ask that as we go through our trainings this year, and I'm, I'm going to run through the timeline of what this year looks like um, more towards the end. Um, but we have two more trainings coming up. We have already had one training in Scarborough, we'll have two more. It'll be a total of 120 high school students this year to be trained in this work, um, which is tripling our numbers from last year. And we'll be the most um, we've trained in any one high school during one year um, ever. And so we're really thankful that Scarborough has given us that opportunity and welcomed us into its doors to, to do that. Um, we're looking forward to really um, gaining the, the critical mass of students to be able to, to take this leadership and, and take action to create positive social change. And it sounds like um, that work is going to be able to meet a lot of your goals as a as, um, the leadership on the, the board and the work. Um, and so these are some of the things that we look for as we're thinking about candidates for our CP programs. We want like, students across all grade levels in the high school, students across different social groups, whether those are um, kind of like based on status type groups, which there are a lot of in, in high school, but also looking at like, the types of clubs and things that students do and how they connect with each other based on that. We're trying to get people from all those different groups to come in and have a voice in that space, and that's what makes this uh, really effective because of its, um, it's all people from the same group, the same cohort, and it's hard to be able to have a discussion um, and have it be impactful. And then just looking at like, students who have who show current uh, leadership potential or, or may be able to um, exhibit that based on based on who they are, how they engage with people, uh, and students who might um, benefit from being able to be a part of that and don't have an area where they can show up first yet. Um, and then that process just looks like identifying who those, who those individuals are um, and having that discussion with the student. That might look like um, that can like, look a lot of different ways based on one's relationship with that student, but um, some ways that we thought about talking to students for this is um, just talking about how this is a, an opportunity for leadership development. Um, it's a really special opportunity in the school considering how few students get to take part in it. Um, and then just kind of talking about the, the general like, positive characteristics of that student um, displays that um, puts them in the in the running to be a, a nominee to join the program. And then so just the timeline this year. Um, like I said, we, we've had one high school training, um, which Julia and Sarah were a part of facilitating this year, which is always a really amazing addition to our program um, because the, you, like student peer-to-peer -peer voices is so much more powerful than we can ever than we're ever going to be able to be. So um, so that's huge. Um, we've done our first half of the of the middle school boys this year. Um, we'll be finishing that up starting the end of this month, and that will run through the month of February. Um, we have a screening of the mask living coming up on the 24th with a snow day date of the 25th, um, unless we get another bomb cyclone and we need another <laughs> snow day date. Um, and then we have two more high school trainings coming up, one at the end of this month, and then one in March. And so um, the one in March gives a lot of opportunity to, to think about this and roll it over and who might be a good nominee. I, I'm not as involved in coordinating high school stuff. I don't know how many students are enrolled right now for the January, um, January date, but I'm sure that's well underway. So I don't know how, many, how much more room will be in that one. Um, some other things that are coming up, we have some of uh, the, the adult intensives, which um, I encourage you to attend as adults. It's an opportunity to spend a day um, going through some of our programming <coughs> at a higher level than the, than the students do because it's, the conversation is different um, for adults. And just kind of running through some of what we do, but also exploring or reflecting on these, these subjects as adults. And I think right now, considering the climate and everything that um, is pretty much a daily news story around um, sexual harassment and um, assault in the workplace, I think it's a valuable time to attend these and, and know how to how to talk about it and be um, part of these discussions. Um, and so we have several of those coming up. We have one in January on the 20th, um, which will unfortunately conflict with the anniversary of the Women's March this year. So um, if 
that's a, if that's something you want to be a part of. Then we have another one coming up in February, which will which is not finalized yet, but should be within the coming uh, ten days or so. Uh, then another in uh, March, and then another in May, and it will likely be one in April. But we have um, the other big things that are more relevant to Scarborough are so we have like our action, the RSVP action group, these two are part of meets weekly, and a lot of that is kind of planning for community events and discussing how what that will look like. But they've got some really cool stuff coming up this year, um, looking at like teachers and coaches trainings. Um, and I don't, I didn't have dates for those, really, so I didn't put anything. Yeah, so that later. stuff is being finalized. But that's been in the works since this summer, so that um, so that's coming up this year, and that's a really amazing opportunity because I think um, it's it's great for students to be able to take that lead on educating the the teachers in here because that's I uh, the the best teachers that I know they want the best for their students. And if their students are the ones sharing those needs and those perspectives, then that's who they're really going to listen to. Um, so that's a really amazing opportunity. And then also. Um, I haven't been much a part of this, but I've heard a lot of planning around um, students organizing to go and actually read books around this stuff, around like gender roles and um, and taking action and standing up for others and, and showing compassion for others to the elementary age students, which um, I could talk about for a while because I think that's a, I think that's a really easy um, thing to do because it, there's so many pieces of that that I think I really value. But, um, so I think that's really cool. And those will be coming up this year, and I'm, um, I think those dates will probably be finalized by the end of the month, but that's not really the so, um, But yeah, so that's kind of what's coming up this year. I might have missed a few things, but um, so yeah, so, and then, um, so any students, names who you have, um, this is the name I had Julia. Yep. Karen Sprague is um, the, the high school principal's secretary. So if you have any recommendations, you can email them to her. Thank you. Um, and then I had you, um, you guys have this slide in your, in your file, so you're welcome to send it out for reference for anyone um, here. And then if you need to connect with me or anyone at Western Men, then that's my information and a goofy gift. <laughs> thank you so Good much. Job. Thank, you. thank you. Good luck, ladies. Great job. Thank you so much. These, a really, really important topic. These two students, along with Dylan and other students, are also a part of our Equity Improvement Network. And um, Dylan has been hosting some monthly trainings for our leadership council around various equity issues, gender um, equity being one of the many topics. And tomorrow morning, they're presenting around um, stress and anxiety.
And that's all I have for you this evening. Um, committee reports. Jackie, do you have anything from the state? I do. Uh, I went to the Maine School Boards Association meeting on Saturday, and uh, I have sent you via email this afternoon. I, I don't know if you received it yet, but the bills that we are going to discuss at our legislative committee meeting, uh, we have a teleconference on this Thursday. And a couple of things that you should know about. Uh, there will probably be a pushback on time for the requirement for the uh, proficiency-based diploma. Uh, the state cannot seem to come up with all the rules and regulations necessary, and there's been a lot of pushback <coughs> from communities and uh, on this issue. Uh, the Learning Center's funding, is it that? Yeah, the Regional Center. Is questionable. We had, um, oh gosh, I didn't write down his name. No, I know him too. Uh, from German Woodson made a presentation uh, on this issue Saturday and we had a good discussion with him. Uh, the funding is questionable. They're, they're changing the rules by the hour, it appears. And there is no way that we should plan on any money in our budget because there's a new glitch that the community has to vote on it. And Dick, uh, God, it's terrible to get old. Anyway, uh, I will keep you apprised of that as. And you, I'm sure you're going to, we're going to be getting some uh, correspondence from main school boards on it. The health centers <clears throat> that were deleted from school districts last year because of funding are going to be reinstated. It doesn't affect us, but it does affect a lot of communities where it was the only health uh, facility that students had. And then... Uh, I said, said that I, I wrote this before I got the agenda for the legislation meeting, so I've sent it to you. If you have any questions, just give me a call. It'll tell you there, I think it tells you there how to go to main.gov legislature, type in the number, and then you can click on the short version or the long version. Short version gives you the synopsis. Most of them at the moment do not have a funding piece to it, so it's a little difficult to decide whether or not or how far they're going to go. If you see a piece of legislation that you think we should speak on at the legislature, you don't need to get in touch with me, just get in touch with Maine School Boards and they'll help you prepare uh, your speech and, and make an appointment for you to to uh, speak to the Education Commission, Committee. With regards to negotiations, it's still ongoing with bus drivers and the administrators. Very good. Leanne, do you have any committee meetings? I didn't hear you. Leanne? Leanne? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, actually, we had a meeting regarding the draft workflow for um, the business partnership. And the meeting for this week has been canceled, but we should be seeing the first draft of how it looks to do the intake form online, which will be great. Um, also talked about thank you letters that go out for people who are going in and um, working in the schools just as a parent volunteer, and using a mission statement on that thank you letter, sort of to spur people into knowing that the business partnership exists, with the hope that they may be able to get their businesses or their employers more engaged. Um, but it was a great meeting, so work out. Thank you. Mary, policy? Um, well, we're going to be more for policy later, but I just want to say that we are, our next meeting is on Wednesday, um, January 10th from 9 to 10 in the morning, and we'll be talking about um, JLCD, and that is about administering medications to students and thinking about medical marijuana in our hand. And uh, some of the, one of the nurses from high school will be joining us so to talk more about that with us. So that's, that's coming. Thank you.
about anything from finance? Yes. So we had our joint finance committee meeting um, on December 19th, and it was actually a joint finance and joint communications meeting. So there were a bunch <coughs> of us there. Our next joint meeting will be January 16th, which I believe is a Tuesday. We should have looked that up before. Yeah, Tuesday um, at 6 o'clock. And then we will have our regularly scheduled school board finance committee meeting before our first Thursday, February school board meeting, which happens to be February 1st. So February 1st at 6 o'clock will be the school board finance committee meeting. Uh, a couple of things that we talked about at the joint meeting, uh, we obviously have adopted our norms. We can talk about those for a couple of um, meetings and added some goals to those, so we adopted those at that meeting. And we also approved the, um, I don't know that we approved it, but we um, read through our calendar for the budget process for the next six months, meetings that will happen, um, when first reading will be, all the nitty gritty of the budget process. So I think there were two meeting dates that needed to be tweaked before we could actually um, approve it. And um, I think that's about it for that meeting. Very good, thank you. Moving on to 9.0, student representative reports. Do we have any? Yes. So I brought bonus. Um, there has not been too much happening the last couple weeks because of vacations now. Mm -hmm. um, I did bring some photos though. The day before students went on break at the high school, there was a uh, band concert. Oh, thank you. And so. I, uh, Ms. Richardson at the high school, the band teacher, provided some photos of them preparing for their holiday concert. And then, so I included those that I thought were kind of funny. Um, <laughs> and then the band and chorus had, I believe there were two concerts, but this was the morning one that I went to and study hall, so I popped in. And you, I, I could not believe how many people were there. It was completely packed. It looked like there's, it's, every seat's full. Um, I was standing at the door trying to get a photo, but I just thought I'd share some of those. And then I have one more thing. Ms. Crosby shared some photos. Uh, the Red Learning Community at Wentworth had a PJ Readathon the week before uh, break. And so students were invited to wear their pajamas and bring their favorite book, and they got to curl up with a good book for, I think it was an hour or two, and got to just read in the hallway. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Dylan, don't you have one more slide? I do. Francesca. So we have another student leader who's here. Um, I would invite Francesca Suster to the podium. Uh, recently, we had a blood drive last week, um, and this young lady single-handedly planned and organized the blood drive herself. Um, and it was really an amazing event. She'll talk a little bit about it. I have been learning more about how critical it is to host blood drives and to, um, and it's something that I was approached by the American Red Cross in the beginning of the year and um, I kept bringing this like bag of folders to our leadership meetings waiting to see if there was a school who wanted to host a blood drive and kept taking it back with me back into my car because there has just been so much on our plates. Um, and then I had a meeting invite to go to the high school and meet with a student and it was Francesca and she talked to me about how she's doing this blood drive. She already had the date set, she already had um, posters made and she had worked with the Wentworth, um, a class, a fifth grade class at Wentworth to make a video which we shared um, on social media and on our website. And um, it really is just amazing. It's, uh, I also had a chance to donate. It was my first time donating blood. Um, and I think that it just has opened my eyes up to how impactful it can be for one person just to give a few minutes of their day. And I know that you'll talk more about it, but some of the facts that I find fascinating is that um, the, in order to meet the needs of patients, the Red Cross must collect 15,000 units of blood each day, and that 80% of donations are collected at blood drives, like the one that Francesca led at our school. Um, I also have learned that um, 190 times a day we help a family, the American Red Cross helps families affected by disaster, and that 5,600 times a day someone receives um, Red Cross unit of blood. And so when you start to think about that, I think earlier we read something else about every two seconds someone is in need of blood. So it's just
just, it's pretty fascinating when you start to think about the amount of love that's needed and the amount of love that it saves. So I wanted to bring Francesca here tonight so she could talk with you about her work and you could um, get a glimpse at what an amazing young person she is. Okay, so hi, my name is Francesca. And over the summer, my parents gave me two options, to either get a job or figure out something else to do. And I wanted to get involved with my community and with volunteering. So I kind of made it my job to give back and to make sure I can make my community better in any way I can. So I volunteered at the American Red Cross at the Blood Donation Center in Portland. And I also volunteered with the Portland Housing Authority with their free lunch program. So any kids who don't have food or money during the summer who depend on food from school, we can have food lunches. So with my work from the American Red Cross, I was a volunteer on the floor at the donation center. So I would check donors in and I would sit with them at the canteen. And most of the time I was the volunteer basically in charge there. And while I was there, I got a few connections from the staff at the American Red Cross, one of them being Eddie Scott, who is a blood drive staff member there. He's one of the coordinators. And he asked me if I wanted to be part of the Leaders Save Lives program. And I said, of course. And we started planning this blood drive. And it we had a bowl of 60 units of blood. And there were 79 appointments that I had open. And I filled 73 of them. And usually with appointments, you expect 10 to the 15th not to show up. We had 63 people show up. And there were four people deferred from different reasons. Iron levels were low whatnot. And overall, we collected 79 units of blood out of the whole of 60, which ended up saving 177 lives. We figured it all out. So it just shows how big of an impact one six-hour little production can have on our community. And I really hope we continue forward with having more of them annually if it's possible. Thank you. Wow, fantastic. That's awesome. And you're awesome. Who are you? Great. Fantastic. Are you in a key club? I am not. No. Did, did the key, was that the same blood drive that the key club was helping with? Yes. So they helped me get appointments from the school student body, and I have a community outreach house. Because I, I'm in Kiwanis, <coughs> excuse me, and they helped with the Kiwanis blood drive that uh, Kiwanis had last uh, Thursday, spring Thursday. at, at Cabela's. Yeah. And then I think um, I was at your meeting. they said they were going to help with a blood drive at the high school. So yeah. that was really great. Thank you. Congratulations. Jody? Oh, great job. I was bummed because I had to give him blood earlier in December, so I couldn't yeah. give again. But I, th I found it interesting to learn that the blood doesn't last very long. And so that's why when there's a, an emergency, um, the need is so critical. And because they're going through it so quickly, and, and it doesn't last um, more than, I think it's only a couple days. So right? usually what happens is, from our center here, the blood gets shipped down to Boston overnight, and it gets put into little it gets tested, and then once it's past that, it goes into any hospital that it's needed in out of the whole country, and it's usually used up in a few days. So when you see things like Las Vegas or any hurricanes or anything, that blood that's there was actually from people who donated before the incident even happened. So that just shows that you need blood at all times because you never know what's going to happen. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The only other thing I would add is that while I was having this meeting with Francesca at 7.30 in the morning and she was basically telling me how I could help promote the event, she also then asked if we could, if we would be willing to host a naturalization ceremony, another, um, a, another event that she is leading and helping us organize for hopefully sometime in February. So just really amazing to think all before 8 o'clock she had done these two really nice events. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
now moving on to 11.0 under new business, 11.1. Is there a motion to accept the minutes meeting of November 2nd? Uh, move to accept as printed. Second. Any questions, corrections? Very good. All in favor? Oh, yeah, can I actually just speak oh, to that? Sure. Well, no, I knew there were some, were there any questions about the EDA, so I just wanted to just address that. Oh, no, well, oh, this is just for the oh, minutes meeting. of the sorry. meeting. Sorry. 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 Okay, so there's November 2nd oh, yes. of the meeting. All in favor? Five plus one. Two absent. 11.2, the meeting minutes of November 16th. Is there a motion? So Second. Very good. Any questions, corrections? Seeing none. All in favor of those minutes? All in favor of those minutes of November 16th? I'm abstaining. I wasn't here. Okay. So it's going to be four plus one and one abstention and two absent. And 11.3, the second reading of policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings. Move approval is printed. Second. Are there any questions, any comments? This is the second reading. Mary, do you want to make a well, comment? Well, there were some, I guess there was some questions um, that were kind of heard around, so I just wanted to talk about BEDH and that, uh, you know, this is about public participation at board meetings. And you know, we did, as I think Donna mentioned, the last time at the first reading, this was at the suggestion of Drummond Woodson, that we're updating the policy. Um, and you know, it was mostly just because there was just a lot of, you know, the other one was quite wordy and just, there was too much in it, um, as far as, you know, much more complicated than it needed to be. So this policy, um, while shorter, is still very similar to the previous policy, um, you know, in the current policy, Committee members, staff, and interest parties can speak on issues that are on the meeting agenda, and that has not changed. That that is the same, and that's just the same as it now as it is now with this new policy. That if someone wants to speak to something that is not on the agenda, then they would need to contact the superintendent to see if that could be put on the agenda. So I just wanted to clarify that 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 part of the policy is the same as it was before. Anyone else? Any questions? One additional question um, with what goes onto the agenda. If something does not make the actual agenda, how is that being addressed? So the intent would be that um, we're able to resolve the question or the issue at the lowest possible level. So if you're asking a, a question, depending upon what the issue is, it may not actually be a board matter. And so it's just a way for us to be able to work closely with families to make sure that we're actually moving um, and responding to their requests in the most appropriate way. Uh, I think for some folks, it can, can be confusing what is a board issue and what is a, a school level issue or a classroom level issue or a district level issue. And so the intent of this clarification of the policy is really just to um, facilitate that work with families in a really open, transparent way. Thank you. Yeah. All set. We ready to vote? So this is the second reading of policy BEDH. All in favor? Five plus one. Two absent. 11.4, the second reading of JF. CK, which is the student use of cellular telephones and other electronic devices. Move approval is printed. Second. Mary, did you want to make a comment? Um, well, just, just again, this was just an update of the policy just to, take, just to remove, you know, whether said, there was some talk of MP3 players and kind of out of date wording. So most of that is, is really the same. It's just changing a little bit of the, of the wording in it. But. Any questions? Very good. All in favor? Five plus one. Thank you. And 11.5, the second reading of JFCKR, student use of cellular telephones and other electric devices. Move for proposal is printed. Second. Any questions? Very good. All in favor? Five plus one. 11.6, we have a Hancock Lumber Respire Brothers donation. Yes, so um, as you know, we are preparing to bring the art show back, and we have been working really closely with the Scarborough Arts, Arts Council along with our art department 
to um, talk about the logistics of what will the art show look like, um, you know, how will we ensure that every student enrolled in an art course is represented, and um, one of the things that we needed to do was build some panels to allow us to display artwork because we want to ensure that every student has a, a minimum uh, and maximum of one piece on display. So some of that will be 2D, some of that will be 3D work, some of that will be digital work. Um, but the need to develop these panels, and they look kind of like if you could imagine a bee with a hinge on it. And, um, and so there's some work that has to be done, but also some lumber and equipment that needed to be purchased. And so um, Sue Ketch, who's our assistant principal at the high school and a very huge supporter of our arts programs, had reached out to um, Rosvera Brothers to see if they could help us get um, some the, the best pricing for the materials. And when she did that, they also offered to donate all of the materials. So what you have in your packet is a letter from Sue Ketch um, explaining that when she had spoken with Bill Rosvera about the quote, um, he had offered to, uh, to supply all of those materials for us as a very generous donation. And so the totaling amount from what we're um, anticipating here is um, well over $1,000. You can see that just for the, the Luan that in the strapping alone, that was um, $1,157.84. And then, um, you know, the additional, like, donate, the additional amount that they had to, after the, I'm sorry, after the discounted pricing, they ended up donating over $600. So um, we are very grateful and are excited to bring the art show back. And we'll have some communications and posters out um, soon. But it's a big, it's a big task to be undertaken. And we're really proud of our art teachers for taking the lead and helping us celebrate our students' artwork. Yes, Jackie? We had dozens of those panels. Did, did we just take them apart? With them? We still have over 20. I think we have 21 or 22 of them. Um, but we need almost 70 in Good. order to pull the art show off. So some of them had to be dismantled because they were either rotten or no longer safe. So it's just we're also looking to partner with um, some other community partners to build, actually physically build them. So Ms. Bear is donating the materials, and then we're, we have the work to do of actually building the materials. Move approval of the donation. Sorry. Very good. All in favor of the donation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Hancock Lumber and Ms. Barra Brothers. 12.0 appointments, 12.1 high school athletic coaches. Yes, please accept the appointments as presented for high school winter coaches and co-curricular appointments. Move approval is printed. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Five plus one. Thank you. 12.2, high school co-curricular appointments. Um, I, again, I would ask that you please accept the appointment as presented for Mary Beth Noble to be the Red Storm Gazette advisor and funded out of general fund. Move approval as presented. Second. Any questions about this? All in favor? Five plus one. And 12.3, the high school Jim Dandies advisors. Um, this, uh, these are two, two Jim Davies advisors that are booster funded. Um, I would request that you accept these appointments as printed. Booster funded. Any questions? Um, is there a motion? Move approval as presented. Second. Any questions? All in favor? A plus one. Donna? Yes. I had one other piece of information from the leg legislative committee. There are over 50 bills here. Uh, that are carryover from the last session. So uh, I, I think that probably the best thing to do is to leave it with with Kelly, and she can make copies, or she can send it to you. I don't know how to do that, but these are bills, and they say the position that the committee has taken, Maine School Boards Association has taken uh, on these bills so far. 
So if you have any questions, give me a call and, and I can explain what's happening. I think if you send that electronically, we'll have the number and you can click on it and see that. So, can you send it electronically? I, 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 I no, I can't see yeah, it. Kelly will. We have. Kelly, I tried. Yeah, we but have. I, I'll okay. try it again. How those all you know me, I'm not too good at that computer stuff. <laughs> We have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Okay. All in favor? Five plus one. Thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. So we could be